Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's David George Brook, that gratitude guy with another special guest on the Gratitude Podcast interview, The Pandemic. And today my guest is a young man I got to meet a few years ago, and he's just become a good resource and mentor to me, Brian Bushlag. Brian, welcome to the podcast. Not so young anymore, David. <laughs> well, you're a lot younger than me. Experienced so. <laughs> now. Experienced, right? Yeah. <laughs> Experienced. That's true. That's true. So, well, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm actually asking people their opinion on things, and I've just gotten some tremendous tidbits to uh, extend to people that may not have the right imagination or the amount of uh, uh, the proper outlook to this, if you will. So my first question is, what is your best coping mechanism uh, to deal with this pandemic for Brian and family? Uh, it's a cliche, but I stay positive. You know, I learned a mm. long time ago to block out all the negatives we get. We get so many negatives. You turn on the TV, you look at any of the news websites, and having been in the media for, gosh, over 30 years now, they want your eyeballs. They want you tuned into that. So there's a lot of things that they do that I don't think average folks realize they're getting sucked into. And before you know it, you know, an hour online and you're really worried about what's going to happen not only in the world, but in your community. And so I just try to block as much of that stuff out. Now, it doesn't mean that I don't look at it. You know, you right. have to stay in touch with what, what's going on. Obviously, we're all monitoring this situation, but um, I don't let it get to me. And, you know, you can, you know, take that exit ramp maybe for 15 to 30 minutes and you got to get back on the freeway and keep, keep moving point. forward. And, looking out the, the front window, not in the rearview mirrors, right, as we're traveling along. So just try to stay positive and uh, a lot of positive, um, you know, mental reinforcement, a lot of positive self-talk, uh, just thinking positively. And, you know, you know this better than anybody, be grateful and being thankful for what we have. So yeah, um, well said. And I think about how um, you're known by the company you keep. And uh, I had a friend say this to me years ago, and I loved it. He says, I've had some, some great friends that have become acquaintances. And you yep. don't think of it as going that other direction. You think of always getting to be closer and closer. But sometimes it's, if a person, you know, we can be, it's a choice. We can be positive or negative. So great, great input, great input. So clearly these are uncertain times. And so what would you say, just right at this very moment, you're most grateful for? Well, I just took a breath there, so I'm grateful that I can breathe. Mm. You know, you're thankful that you have a roof over your head, um, that you have food in your refrigerator. I know a lot of people don't right now. Um, True. You've got a freezer full of frozen chicken, and you're stocked up. And, you know, having gone through my own struggles building businesses, uh, I feel like I've already kind of been through this or been prepared for it. You know, we had mm. the Great Recession Obviously, everybody's familiar with that 10, 12 years ago. But, um, you know, coming back from that was a real struggle for, for us and for our family and, you mm. know, continuing to build businesses and face financial struggles and not be able to do things. And there's a lot of things I could say about this. I, you know, as a culture, I feel like our country has become kind of soft and, mm. you know, we're used to things that even 20, 30 years ago, people never thought of like flying around the world and travel. And those are nice luxuries, but they're not necessities. And sure. so I wake up every day and I'm not kidding you. I'm thankful that I woke up. Uh, I'm thankful that I can take a hot shower. Uh, and that's important when you work at home a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. thankful that we have a roof over our head, that we have vehicles that we can drive because, you know, in your uh, financially challenged or you're in a situation like this, as many people will be, millions of people will be, um, you know, that trip to Hawaii or playing golf, um, those, are, those are luxuries. Those are yeah. things that, you know, <laughs> a lot of people are going to find out we have taken way for granted. And really the most important things are, you know, your family, um, your, your spouse, your children, and being thankful for those things. So I, I mean, I'm a student of your gratitude uh, mm -hmm. journal, and that's, that's where it all starts every single day. And, you know, you know this because you've been in business with Nordstrom and other companies. You have, you have a lot of great days. You have a lot of great wins, but you also have a lot of days that aren't so great, and you right. have to be able to balance all that out. So that's yeah. where the gratitude piece comes in. 
No, that's excellent. And I think that just any time, the other day I came up with 10 different things. I think I did a video on it about just 10 different positives that came out of the COVID-19. And one of them was it helps you to realign your priorities. Yes. And, and we get them out of whack. I mean, I, I love what you said about the hot shower and the roof over your head and food in the refrigerator. And we take it for granted. Oh, I don't get to go to the trip to Hawaii. So, yeah. so well said. And, and, and speaking of that segues nicely into my next question. If you think about some of the people aren't going to be as positive as you are or as creative. So what are some of the thoughts, ideas, and tips you might give to somebody about how to go through this as their home homebound, if you will? Well, it's a great time to, uh, you know, it's the cliche check up from the neck up. And mm. you know, if, you, if you haven't been coached uh, by a, a career coach or a business coach or a personal coach over the years, this will be completely foreign to you. And I know a lot of people out there haven't. They thought maybe that's corny or I would never do mm. that. But, you know, I, I learned 20 years ago, I know you learned this too, that obviously professional athletes are coached. They don't get there on their own. And, and that's true for all of us. And so I was Fortunate, very blessed to work with a group called Building Champions out of uh, Lake Oswego, Oregon for a number of years. And so a lot of what I learned then, I always fall back on, um, not even in challenging times, but, you know, in good times too, because you got to you gotta temper the good times because you know that there's challenges on the way. So, um, you know, I, there's a lot of things I fall, fall back on. Uh, there's a great book by Shad Helmstetter. And uh, talking about positive self-talk and, you know, constantly telling yourself positive things because the other side of that is, you know, when it's going negative, you got a lot of flaming arrows coming at you, right? Exactly. Um, you know, your, your subconscious mind, um, not only your conscious mind, <laughs> other people, I mean, a lot of stuff coming at you that's going to give you negative information and you can't do this or you shouldn't do this. So, I always fall back on that, you know, what to say when you talk to yourself. That's the book by oh, Shad Helms Setter. And, like and there's just a lot of great stuff in there that, you know, hey, it might be a terrible day. It might be a bad week or month. You might have lost a job. Might have lost a career. Might have lost your car. Maybe you're going to lose your house. Mm -hmm. But, you know, none of that's permanent. And in the moment, you know, there's one thing that nobody can take away from you. And that's your, what's in your head. And you got to sure. stay positive. So that's one of the things. And I will tell you, you know, I haven't always been that way. Been mm -hmm. so many periods I went through where I was really pissed off and mm -hmm. mad, upset that things weren't happening. Why aren't they happening? And, you know, in each one of those instances, you just look yourself in the mirror. There's a reason it's not happening. And in most cases, it's that person staring back at you in the mirror. And right. that's, you know, that's something that I think right now, you know, where we're at with what's happening, a lot of people are going to have to reevaluate not only what they do, but who they are and how they carry themselves. And Good. we all make mistakes. Uh, there are, <laughs> I used to say I have no regrets. Well, that was a younger version of me who was a complete idiot. Now, you know, we all have regrets, right. but I think it's a great time for all this stuff. I, you know, my wife and I have talked about how our culture you know, the book we want to write is called uh, Overload. We are so overloaded. Everybody so busy. Everybody, how are you doing? I'm busy. I'm so busy. I'm so busy. I'm so busy. Right. People are running around. Kids are doing three or four activities that consume great all thing. afternoon and evening and weekends. And they're flying to tournaments all around the country or dance mm -hmm. competition, whatever it may be, right? We just, as a culture, we're on overload. And so as brutal as this will be, and I do think this will be a very brutal downturn, I do not expect things to just, you know, lickety split, bounce back in six months. It's going to be brutal. We're already right. seeing that. It's a great time to reevaluate everything and realize, you know, about 80% of that crap we do, it has no significance in life. It's just, you know, it's a, it's a want. It's not a need. Such a great point. And I think I used to joke about, you run into people and how have you been? I'm busy. Oh, you think you're busy? That's nothing. I'm 10 times busier. It's like a status symbol. Who's yeah. the busiest, you know? And so, gosh, I mean, somebody once said the sign of a person that's well organized is a person that always has time for you, you yeah. know, and, and has control of their day or what have you. So um, that's really good. So last question is not only through the pandemic and through where we are right, where we are right now, but do you have kind of maybe either a quote or a philosophy 
that Brian uses or thinks in the back of your head that kind of applies to how you view your life uh, over and above what you just said? Well, I got a lot of them. Um, and, uh, boy, to pick one right off the top of my head, there's that quote by uh, Theodore Roosevelt about, you know, the man in the arena. Oh, is the one that's, tremendous. You know, in the game and there's all the people in the, you know, in the bleachers, the spectators that are taking shots, but he's the guy in the arena. He's the one that's out there fighting. And I think about that a lot. Um, there's a Bible right verses I think of. Uh, one that comes to mind is, uh, you know, enter through the narrow gate because broad is the road and wide is the path that leads to destruction. And many people follow it. And I can't oh, tell nice. you right where that's at, but, you know, it talks about following the crowd. And, and so many people do that instead of making the correct decision. When the coronavirus first hit the Seattle area, you and I both live and work in this area. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was late January, early yeah. February. And I remember people at the time, obviously now there's still some of those folks out there who don't think it, didn't think it was a big deal, didn't want to believe it was a big deal or wanted to ignore it. Um, and so this is kind of off topic from your question, but I feel like you've got to be bold enough now to make your own decisions. And so we, we started staying at home on March 2nd. And oh, wow. Good most, for you. Most people in the area, friends, family thought we were nuts. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I was okay with that because I just, you know, my own values, my feelings were, I'd rather be safe than sorry or however you want to put it. Yeah. And so not that, you know, that made us any smarter or anything in retrospect, but I'm saying that those are decisions we made. And that first week was tough because, you know, you pull kids out of dance or activities when all their friends are still there and they're mm -hmm. asking you a lot of hard questions and you've got to stick to your guns. And then obviously we know how this played out, but um, there are so many of those quotes out there about, you know, not following the crowd, right? Um, whether it's a Bible verse or whether it's the, you know, so I couldn't pick one. Um, Boy, if you'd have given me, if you'd have fed me that question early, I could have given you about 20 of them, but uh, that's what they're all centered on is, you know, being your, being yourself. And that's uh, good. And, and I'm going to, I'm going to get that. To, oh, and by the way, would you be kind enough to send me maybe a link to that book you were talking about? And I'll put it in the description sure. below the uh, video. So those that might be interested could click on it. Uh, Cause that sounds like that could really be helpful. And, and I might even, you know what I'm going to do too. I'm going to put either a link or I'll just cut and paste it into below the video, the Teddy Roosevelt quote, because it is so great about rather than be those cold and timid souls that would never venture, you know, through this and just sit back in the sidelines and throwing stones, at everybody else, but they do nothing and, and better to be out in the arena and making a difference. And, and certainly yeah. that's what I hope that I'm doing. And I know you do. So I know you um, are too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you. So it's excellent. Well, listen, thank you so much. I appreciate that, those tidbits. And as I say, it's the same thing with gratitude. My, my comments around gratitude are always, uh, it helps you to focus on what you have versus what you don't have. And gratitude turns what you have into enough. And so anytime that somebody says, gosh, I noticed what Brian Bushlack said on the uh, interview the other day. That was really cool. This comment, that comment, be hanging around positive people. I mean, how many times could you be reminded of? Not only are you known by the company you keep, but one bad apple spoils the bunch. So if you want to hang around a bunch of negative Nellies, that's fine, but I would choose not to. And yeah. uh, so that's an excellent point. So thank you so much. I really appreciate those comments. And uh, we shall chat soon. Thanks for having me. You bet. Thanks, Brian.